For today's video, I've been asked to review a film emulation plugin. This is a bit different to my usual visual effects content, but this is actually quite a good look at the step that comes after the visual effects, which is doing the color grade and the edit, which I never really show. So if that kind of stuff interests you, this might be quite an enjoyable video. The plugin is called Dehancer. From what I gather, there's a few different versions of it that you can get. I'm gonna be using the Pro plugin. I opened it up and had a very quick play with it before recording this video, just to see what it could do. But for the most part, this is me just going in and trying it out for the first time. The reason I was interested in making this is because after I do all of my visual effects for all of my films and stuff, the last thing I do is I go into DaVinci Resolve and I do a color grade. Usually that involves swinging the colors around a bit, changing the saturation. Normally I put some vignettes and some film grain and stuff on. And this Dehancer plugin is pretty much perfect for that last step. From the quick test I did before recording this video, it seems to have some really good tools for emulating different film stocks. You can add glow and bloom and things again to emulate the look of film. It's got some nice tools for adding automatic vignettes, which is a bit quicker than doing it with the shapes in DaVinci Resolve. So I've done a quick test render just to try this out on and give you something to look at. So let's get stuck in and see how this goes. So here we go, we're in DaVinci Resolve. The layout's a bit all over the place because I'm having to record this just on one monitor, whereas normally I have it across all of my screens. So this is what the render looks like. I've only done one frame. It's not comped very well at all. Just sort of slapped it all together in Nuke. I rendered a couple of layers out of Blender and then just threw it all together and put some glows and stuff on it. And essentially what I'm gonna do is add the Dehancer plugin onto this and then go through all of the tools that it has and try and make this look a bit nicer. So once the plugin's installed, it appears in your effects library. So if I come over here and search for Dehancer, it comes up and then you can just drag and drop this onto the footage. And then the controls for it appear over here in the effects tab inside the inspector. As you can probably see immediately, as long as the YouTube compression isn't too mental, it's added a load of film grain onto this. Over here under the input settings, it has the source input, which I guess is your color space. And it also has some options for different camera profiles. And then you have a couple of sliders here for defringe and defringe radius. Defringing is where the software will take a look at your input and detect if there's any chromatic aberration. And based on contrast and saturation, it can do some clever stuff and these sliders will help to remove it. I don't have any in mind because this is a CG render, so I'm just gonna ignore that. I've just click download profiles and I assume this is downloading all of the film profiles so let's see what happens when I do this. If I enable this we can see what that does immediately. Wow that looks quite striking. So there's loads and loads of options in here. Wow these look amazing. <laughs> Jesus that's like uh, the moon landing. I'm not a huge film buff so I only really know the difference between the different brands. I'm not so sure about the difference between kind of the different models whatever they're called inside of the brands. But some of these look really nice like the Kodak stuff looks really cool. Got some Fuji color stuff. This is all looking really nice. I really like how many different looks you can get out of this just by switching through all of them. This feels like uh, an Instagram filter on steroids, but this is actually authentic. <laughs> okay, cool. So that's the film emulations. So let's turn that back off again for now. We've got a load of options here for things like the black point and white point. This is very similar to how it works in Nuke in the sense that it changes the kind of dynamic range of the image. There's some print controls. So we have option for the exposure, the contrast, the color density and the saturation. There's some color head controls. And basically what I can tell from this is you can just swing all of the colors in one direction or another on the hue wheel. You can move them all individually or you can turn on gang and move them all at once. You can get some quite funky results from this. Then there's some controls for the actual film grain. So obviously there's size and amount controls, which are the most common. This is great for if you're trying to get a certain look like 8 mil, 16 mil, 35, they all have different kind of size of grain. So this is really important for getting that look. Down here we have some controls for the actual grain response in the shadows, midtones, and highlights. Then we have some options for halation. I've got the Google definition up just in case anyone doesn't know what it is. It's quite difficult to explain. According to Google, halation is the spreading of light beyond its proper boundaries to form a fog around the edges of a bright image in a photograph or television screen. It's essentially a kind of bloomy glow sort of effect that happens when intense light goes through a camera lens and onto the sensor. I think if I turn off the grain, it'll actually probably be more apparent what it's doing. So if I turn this on, you can probably see that not much has happened immediately. I'm gonna crank the settings up really high just so you can see exactly what it's doing. You can see on the areas of the image, like the edge light of the sun, which is obviously very intense, it gives this kind of bloomy glow effect. There's controls for the local and global diffusion, which kind of dictates how far the halation will spread and bloom outwards. There's an amplify slider, which controls the intensity so you can turn it right up so it becomes quite visible. Usually less is more with this kind of effect. You just wanna go really, really subtle and just have a hint of it. There's also controls for the hue, which is quite cool. So you can swing the hue of the halation. And lastly, there's an impact slider, which is kind of like the mix amount of how much you want it to actually be visible. Then we have bloom. If I turn this on, you can see exactly what that's doing. Let's get rid of the halation for now. Bloom is one of my favorite effects to add in post, especially to scenes like this that have a lot of contrast and bright lights in the shot it really kind of makes everything bed together nicely and feel a bit more cohesive i do this quite a lot just in compositing as well where at the end of my comp if there's lots of lights i'll put an exponential glow on it and it just kind of does like an icing on the cake kind of nice bloomy thing to the whole shot davinci resolve has ways of doing this but it's not as flexible
accessible and it's not as simple as just these sliders. There's a control for the highlights which I think changes the intensity of the highlights and forces more or less bloom. There's a source limiter which acts as kind of like a threshold where once something hits a certain value it will start to bloom. The detail slider is kind of like an edge detect thing. I think it's like a threshold where after a certain amount of contrast it will detect an edge. So you can see if I turn it right down it basically doesn't really detect any detail so there's no bloom happening around the edge of the astronaut. And if I turn it up it will detect all of the edges and say okay there's a certain amount of contrast here and it adds a load of bloom onto all of those lines which looks quite cool. The save light slider seems to kind of roll off the contrast so it allows you to not blow out too many of the really hot highlights. So turning this right down you can see it goes a bit mental if you turn it up it kind of increases the dynamic range almost so that you can see more of the detail in the gradients saturation i would imagine changes the saturation of the bloom although it doesn't seem to be doing much in this instance maybe this just isn't a very good shot to demo it on and then again there's an impact slider which allows you to control the amount of bloom that is mixed back into the final image then we have some vignette settings this is one of my favorite features of the plugin if i turn this on and drop the exposure you can see it adds a really nice vignette obviously this is a bit too big there's also controls for the size and the feather if you want to make it softer or sharper and there's also an aspect ratio control which will change the shape of the vignette. You can also change the center point although you probably wouldn't want to do this in many cases. The next two film breath and gate weave I wasn't exactly sure what these were so I went on the website and looked up the actual definitions. So film breath is the noticeable and accidental change in exposure, contrast and color from frame to frame as the film moves. Essentially it's an organic artifact in the process of working with film. It's actually quite good to demonstrate it on this because I'm only using a single frame so you can see exactly what's happening. Turning up the period changes how often the kind of fluctuations will happen. Turning up the exposure will change how dramatic the exposure shift is. Turning up the contrast and color obviously kind of speak for themselves and again there's an impact slider for this. And then we have gate weave. Let's go back to the website for the definition. This is a commonly used term that refers to the mechanical swinging of a film strip while it's being pulled through a frame window in a film camera projector or video coding device. So if I turn this on you can kind of see what it's doing if I zoom in a bit and it will be more apparent if I turn it up. Again this is a pretty organic artifact of working with film. It's essentially recreating the way that the film will sometimes jitter in place as it's being pulled through the reel and the result of that is this picture that feels like it's wobbling slightly because the film's not always in exactly the same place. Again there's controls for X and Y which allows you to change how much it moves in a certain direction, there's a rotation control and then also an impact slider again. There's also an auto zoom tick box which is automatically on. This punches in a little bit so when it's wobbling you don't get black edges appearing on the edge of the frame. At the bottom there's an option for false color. I'm not exactly sure what false color gets used for in color grading, I assume it's looking at the values and stuff and checking everything's okay. I use it a lot when I'm actually shooting, especially for green screen stuff because you can use it to see how evenly lit the green screen is. But in this sense, I guess it's just a helpful tool for seeing how the values change as you're messing around with the exposure and stuff. There's an output option with a total impact slider. This is basically like a global control for mixing how much of all of this stuff goes onto the footage. Sometimes if you do quite a punchy grade, this is quite a good way to just quickly knock it back 30% or so, so it's less in your face. And lastly, there's a LUT generator. I'm not exactly sure how this feature works, but I assume you can output all of these settings or something as a LUT. And that's all of the settings. So what I'm going to do now is go through and actually do a color grade on this really quickly. I'll just do a time lapse so you can see me working on all the settings. Then I'll show the before and after and how this plugin can add all of the little secret sauce onto all your renders and live action footage. So I'm going to delete this and start again from scratch and let's see how this goes. Okay, and there we go. This is my final color grade that I've done. I always really love the way that film grain looks on space renders. I think it's just because it's reminiscent of those early photos of the moon landing and stuff, but it just looks really cool how the grain's kind of in this gradient of light. So like I said, this is, this is the grade, this is the before, and this is the after. Obviously quite a striking difference. I used the Kodak Kodachrome 64 uh, film profile. Then I went through and I crunched down the black and white points a bit so I added a bit more contrast into the image. I turned up the tonal contrast and the color density a little bit and dropped the saturation ever so slightly. A little bit of messing around with the colors just swung it slightly more towards a sort of magenta -y color. Put a little bit of grain on it, I knocked it back a little bit from the default but still left it quite prominent. This is before, this is after so you can see obviously quite a lot of grain but I really like how that looks. This is the halation. I'll turn off the bloom as well and add them one at a time. So the halation looks like this, pretty simple. As 
you can see, it kind of adds like a nice reddy color that's coming off of some of the highlights from the sun. And then this is the bloom on top of that, which is kind of like a general glow over all of the highlights in the shot. It adds some really nice pings that come off some of the highlights from the suit where it's really catching the sun. It's light artifacts like this that make it feel really grounded in the real world and sometimes make your comps feel that much more realistic. So I slap it on everything. <laughs> then obviously there's quite a strong vignette on this. This really helps to kind of focus your eye on the center of the frame and take away from some of the edges where the highlights are. And then I didn't bother with the gate weave or the film breath just because this is a still frame so it doesn't need any of that stuff. But yeah, once again, before and after, before, after, before, after, took me probably two or three minutes to do that and it's a really really striking look so there we go that's my overview of using dehancer pro in davinci resolve i'm not being paid to say anything nice about this i can say whatever i like and this is my opinion i'm going to continue to use this in davinci resolve after this review to add that little secret source onto all of my renders and my live action footage i think it's a really user friendly and quite concise way of adding that last five percent onto your shots it's really easy to use you can get great results just by swinging the sliders around until you find something you like the film stock profiles are really cool there's a massive range of looks in them and i think that alone is a really cool feature and then the stuff like the bloom and halation just adds that last little chef's kiss onto your color grade. So my actual opinion on this, I think it's really good. If you're interested in picking it up yourself, there will be a link in the description. I'm going to continue using it because I think it's great. I hope you guys have enjoyed. I know it's been a slightly different video. We'll be back to Blender in the next one. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed, consider liking, subscribing, and I'll see you very soon.